Welcome to another In Wheel Time podcast, a 30-minute mini version of the In Wheel Time car show that airs live every Saturday morning, 8 to 11 a.m. Central. Shield.com. Guess who? Us. No, it's not Woody Woodpecker. Yeah. Podcasting and streaming around the globe, it's the In Wheel Time car talk show just ahead from Paint House. Yes, it's the one and only famous Randy Borchardy. Famous. Later... Remember as a kid, you used to go to the hobby shop and get a plastic model car That's and glue what I it together to and paint it? Yep. Well, Jeff has a special story on model car building and how the hobby is doing today. Mm-hmm. It's all just ahead on the Inwheel Time Car Talk Show. Howdy, along with Mike out of this world, Mars. We always need more Jeff Zekin. I'm Don Armstrong. Glad that you could join us on this Saturday for our turn. live right. show. Let's go what, right. What did you right. say? Right. Right. You're good. This way? We're going to do this way. Synchronized. Yeah. Why are we doing that? Because synchronized. I think, what, I, think, I think what we need to do is to do the synchronized wave. Oh, okay. Yeah, the other While hand, Mars. This. The other <laughs> hand, Mars. Yeah, oh, this one. That one. All right. The other hand. There you go. Okay. Speaking of synchronized. Prom wave. Look who's going there. Yeah. Um, hmm. Look, it's Randy Borcherding. <laughs> Hello. Hello. How are you? Well, we're, you? we're doing good. How are you doing up there in the country? I'm all, I'm all right. How y'all? How y'all? Jeet yet? Jeet. Uh, Randy? What's up, fellas? Well, yes. uh, we're just uh, trying to get caught up with you and uh, see what's going on. Yeah, it's been a while. You've been busy, busy, busy. Hey, we saw a little youngster popping in the view there. Yeah, before you had a helper. Know. There's something in here. Who There's is this? Come on there. up. What is, who, come out. Come out wherever you are. They're talking to you, buddy. Uh, oh, no, there he is. <laughs> <laughs> now, is that an option for that year? That's, the, that's an option for that year. Yeah, you, you installed it's that? A one of, it's a one of one, yeah. <laughs> a one of one. Yeah. Priceless. There you go. Yeah, yeah. indeed. There, that is true. So what is that? Uh, what uh, That's got to be a pickup it looks truck. looks like a Chevy. It mm. is. It's kind of a Ooh, look at the flames. flames. Ooh, tub. But here's the cool part. (laughs) He's hiding it. Holy Toledo. What is that? It's big. That is a uh, blown big block, a hemi-headed big block Chevy. Hemi-headed big block Chevy. I didn't know they made uh, hemi heads for a Chevy. Yeah, it's a thing. Area makes them. Um, Cool. It's a cool package. The cool thing is it runs on 93 octane. Really? <laughs> yeah, the guy, the guy, it's his little fun driver. It's not, it doesn't have a roll cage, so they're not going to let it on the strip. And uh, he just has fun with it. But, man, it sounds wicked when you fire it up. I was going to say, does oh, it run yeah. now? It does. I don't want to be the guy to fire it up because there's a process. But I, uh, I he fired it up for us when he dropped it off. And it, it, you, you are not going to sneak around in this truck. <laughs> <laughs> so don't come home at 3 o'clock don't, in the morning <laughs> trying to sneak in the driveway. Don't tell me it's got open headers. No, no, no. It's got exhaust. It, if you look at the uh, right yeah, there. I, yeah, I yeah, 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 yeah. It's got exhaust. It, but it, it ain't doing much. I'll tell you that much. <laughs> how, uh, how, how long have you had this? How long have you been working on it? it the truck just got here. We've been working on it for a while. We've got the fenders. It, it had a, uh, we'll just call it a real fire flame job. Oh. And the front end got burned up. So we've repa- repaired all that. And we're putting it all back together now. Well, hopefully it's not going to catch fire again. Well, agreed. You yeah. know, I agreed. think it, I think it needs suicide doors rather than the standard opening. That's what I would uh, do. Yeah, I, I, I couldn't. Yeah, that'd be all right. I'm not going to do it, but that'd be all right. Be a good option. I like it. Anyhow. What else you got? Uh, something fun. Yeah. Um, let's see. I'll walk you over here. Now, you say that's the customer's. Uh, how long is the process that you've had it, and when's it going to be leaving? It's been a process of months. I need to flip the camera around here. Sorry for my finger okay. there. This one Ooh. is... We just got it back from a buddy in Michigan who's helping us get all the drive line and the engine and tuning taken care of. This is a 55, 55 yeah, Chevy. Yeah. Wow. That uh, two door is on a Morrison independent rear suspension chassis. So it's fully independent chassis. It has the LT4 
an eight-speed automatic that you would normally see in, say, a, a ZL1, modern ZL1 Camaro. Yeah, header wrap and everything. Is that it? those wrapped headers? Yeah, we've wrapped the headers. The, the exhaust is unwrapped, but it will get rewrapped because we um, we did some mods to the exhaust. I didn't like how it sounded, so we've added this H-pipe back here in the back to sort of balance out the sound, get rid of some of the... Just had that sort of old glass pack sound yeah. to it. A little pop in it. Which it did, and it was annoying, and I just didn't like it. But there you can see the, the, the fun part. That's the independent rear suspension. Yeah, nice. And uh, anyway, it's a neat project. We, how, we've, how long have you had that one there? Side. Pardon me? How long has it been in the shop? Um, Gosh, I'm embarrassed to say it, but about three years over the course of time yeah yeah in and out kind of thing so are these going to be any uh special tricks with your special paint any uh creativity going on any of these well and this one i admittedly no this is a porsche color it's called chalk hmm. and then a, a black roof it'll kind of have a hopefully a contemporary look uh yeah. without without being too gaudy one thing we did do and it's hard to tell with it up in the air but the uh, the wheel wells here, we raised them about three inches. You did? So just enough that you can get the dang wheel off now. This big tire. <laughs> let, let, me ask, let me ask you, let's go into that for just a minute. So what, yeah. how did you, did you actually take off the lip and then reposition it? Or did you make a new one? The first, the Re first option. Reposition, we, yeah. yeah. It was cut. Cut a relief area was cut out. It was literally slid upward, yep. and then you sort of fill in the gap. Yeah, so that to speak. makes sense. Yeah, sort of like chopping, and, uh, but in reverse. How 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 do you kind of? I mean, do you, do you do that work? In this case, no. I I I sublet it out to a good friend of mine who no longer lives in Texas, sadly, but he's one of those guys that could take a flat sheet of metal and build you a Duesenberg. Oh yeah. Oh wow. And and. It was right up his alley, and he did a beautiful job making it look like it belongs there. I was most just, people I, don't know. And I, people I was just going to say, if you not pointed that out, I would have never guessed that. Yeah. No. Because yeah, back not, in my day, they just took a cutting torch and yeah. just rounded it off with the wheel. <laughs> and exactly. Yeah, a hammer and, and, and dolly. That is, that is a look I don't enjoy on these cars. On the drag strip, it's fine. But uh, on these cars, when it's going to be on the street and it's got to look you know, somewhat original. Well, yeah. Uh, that, we didn't, uh, uh, didn't want to run that effect. So yeah. is this a daily driver for this customer, or is this going to be a showpiece? No, I wouldn't say a daily, but it, it is expected to perform and behave. Yeah. That was one of the reasons I had it at my my friend's shop in Michigan. He is a, a good friend with a fellow named Mark McPhail. Well, Mark McPhail used to run GM Performance for years, and he did all the tuning on this car. So, uh, not only did it make power, but it's he tuned it for drivability. The sh the upshifting, the downshifting, the just the manners that it has, and above and beyond the bonsai run. You know, mm -hmm. is that why the headers are wrapped so far? I mean, you got them double wrapped. It looks no, like it's kind of, it's uh, it's a look I like. I like the look of the. Uh, let me get in the right spot here. I like the look of this this uh, heat shield products wrap. It's not necessary from a corrosion standpoint. These are it's all stainless steel exhaust all the way through. But the uh, it's a heat control thing, and I kind of like how it looks. Well, that's the only reason I've ever seen it was was heat control, and and I was just curious because I couldn't imagine it being heat. But it sounds like it's aesthetics and and several reasons. Randy, you you said that you sent it up to your buddy in Michigan. I mean, you uh did did you take it up there yourself or did you put it on a car carrier and have it sent up there? Oh, uh, we took it in the the new ATC trailer. It it's something I enjoy doing. I like the road trip, so I don't mind doing that kind of stuff. What and is that about a 1400 mile trip? Approximately. Roughly, yeah. yeah. When, about that. When you got the good, the right people on the job, it's well worth the effort. So you waited uh, while he did it, and then you then you towed it back. He, my friend up there, had the car for about a year doing okay. wiring and wiring and other other things the car needed. And then when it came time to tune it, is when I went back. I was part of the tuning process just because I was fascinated to to watch how it all happens. 
and uh, and then yes, hauled it back home. Was it was it tuned on a dyno? Yes, a chassis dyno. Yep. So uh, one one of the things I didn't think about, but is obviously critical, we had to make sure the rear wheels were aligned, so that when we oh yeah you know added on the dyno, the thing went. In a straight line, yeah. <laughs> try to go sideways. Yeah, try, trying to come off the yeah, dyno because so it's, it's not lined up right. So it had to be basically drivable to do the tune. Indeed, indeed. Randy, is so, is there a dyno uh, chassis dyno here in town that you use? There are a couple. Um, Heights Performance I've used in the past. There's another one, and I'm not quite sure if he's still there anymore. So I hesitate to throw the name out, but yeah. but yeah, there there are. Well, I'm looking, case, for, I'm looking for a Corvette chassis dyno tuner. That's Pites. He specializes in vets. And, and what's his name? Uh, Pites. P-E-I-T-Z, I believe it is. <laughs> Just like it sounds. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'd never guess funny that. How, funny how that works. <laughs> um, anyway, uh, he, he's really good, especially with these new C8s. Well, I've got a... I got a C5 with an LS1 in it. Uh, if he likes yeah. to go back to school, he'll, he'll just yeah, it'll be memory lane for him. Yeah, just a 10 but millimeter. He, that's all he needs. Certainly <laughs> capable. Okay, well, I'll have to. Uh, I'll, I'll get. I'll get his number from you uh, when we're off the air. But, yeah, um, absolutely. D- when you when you redo cars, you know, uh-huh. uh, do you typically do a chassis tune on these cars? Yes, the answer is yes. Simply because drivability is of paramount importance to us. It's one thing to make horsepower, and, and that's cool and all. But if you want to get out and drive these things and and use them and and not regret getting in them and and want to throw it back in the garage and walk away from it, yep. it should yep. be fun. It, it should have it should be able to shift and brake and turn and do all the things we expect cars to do. Correct. That's the reason you put all this modern hardware in these old classic bodies. Mm-hmm. Well, good point. Yeah. Um, and I, I was wondering, because, you know, so many times, well, I've got this, uh, I got this chip I'm going to put in my, in my car, and it, I know it's an LS swap, and I'm going to put it in there. And for me, I come from the school of just guessing. Hey, this guy has this. This guy has that. I'm going to put that on my car. Then I don't really follow through with things like a chassis tune. Or will it work? Or will it work? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, ag- agreed. And thank gosh for people that know how to do the tuning because it's above my pay grade. And you just you find a good one, and and he's worth his weight in race fuel. <laughs> there you go. That's a good way to put it. So, uh, what do you got uh, else, elsewhere in the garage there for us to look at this morning? Uh, I'll flip you back around here. This Cutlass I was pointing out a moment ago. Yeah. 68 uh, convertible. That's it's, been there a while. It has. We're finally getting near the ready to pull it off the chassis and, and get it into a paint job mode. It's a LS3, but dressed out like an Oldsmobile. So it'll appear to be an Oldsmobile, even though it's not. I love the Oldsmobile gold yeah. paint on the engine. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, me too. Uh, we're fitting up the radiator now. It's a Ron Davis unit. It, it it has it's called a PWM fan, which is what all the modern cars use. Pulse width, pulse width modulation. Say that one time, normal. No, yeah. that's all right. Um, it, what it does is it it. Think of it like a rheostat on the the lighting in your home. Yep. It can speed speed up and slow down the fan motor, so it's not always just full blast. Yep. You know how, how often have you heard a car coming in the, the the Saturday night cruise and all you hear is the fan going full blast? Exactly, and well, the, and the, it, the new cars don't do that. And exactly correct. That's what the, the PWM setup allows that to be tuned, where it only needs it only uses the fan as it needs it. And then when you're going down the highway, it'll turn it off because you don't need it then either. That yeah. actually becomes a restriction. Sure. That interesting so car. It, so it, it's a convertible. When are you going to have it done? Next year? Uh, I'd, I'd say end of this year. Not Yeah, maybe towards the end of this year. It all depends on how soon we can get into an upholstery shop. That's become a bottleneck in building cars. Is there's, there's not a whole lot of fellas out there or ladies that – it's certainly not in this area. If they're out there, I'd like to know about them. 
that can do the the upholsteries we're we're needing in these projects. You know, I, I've heard you say that before, and I know that uh, your counterpart in the Hill Country, a couple of them actually, they have issues with that as well, keeping good upholsters, and then uh, yeah. and when one leaves, finding another one that's at the level that they're looking for. Well, and some of these guys, I mean, some of them are young. Most of them are old because they've got the experience. Right, and right. If you've got a good upholster. They're going to stay busy, so it's going to be you're going to play a lot of games to get in there and get it done. Well, I'm thinking so I'm, I'm thinking we need to have the paint house, the paint house upholstery shop. There you go. I've tried. There's a couple really? folks through the years I've tried to convince to to work out of our shop or or help get them set up in the area, and I don't blame them. They don't want the heat, and neither do I at this point. Um, but it's a it's a it's an art, just like all the metal work. Is. Oh yeah, absolutely. And uh, not that painting and mechanics isn't an art form of its own, but but there is something special about a guy that can sew properly and 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 understand comfort and aesthetics and making, for example, a big fella fit in a small space, that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's just hard to find. Well, you know, when you're talking about restorations and uh, modifications at that, that the level that you are, I mean, creativity plays a huge role in it, and you've got to be able to uh, actually turn out not only the creative part of it, but the quality as well. Absolutely. And and that is the thing. We've had upholsters done in the past where they were done out of Texas, out of our climate, and three or four or five years later, they're coming apart because they can't handle the heat and humidity. Yeah. 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 So we, we have to, we work with folks that understand that. And you know, it's funny yeah. because you, 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 we don't think of that when we're all, oh, I just want this material and I want, I want to look this particular mm -hmm. way. Let's not worry about what kind of thread that we use and the material that's underneath the seat. Uh, yeah. Right. And, and it's kind of the same with paint and body work. It's, Everybody sees the paint, but all the all the nothing matters more than what's underneath it in the foundation, and that's true in the upholstery world too. You can build a door panel out of aluminum or a nice high end um, acrylic material, or you can build a door panel out of cardboard and and uh, wood, and one is going to last a lot longer than the other. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no doubt. Yeah. How's Jen? She's awesome. Way better than I deserve. <laughs> I know. Well, I was just going to say that. Well, please give her our love, and uh, it's always great to talk to you. And yeah. uh, we're looking forward to our next time to see the progress on the Oldsmobile. Absolutely. Or on the okay. on the pickup. The pickup truck, too. But I got a feeling the pickup truck's going to be out of there before we talk to you uh, again. It should be gone by the end of this coming week, yep. if, if we're on schedule. Yeah. Well, I, I like uh, I like the uh, little rodent that you had there. In, in, <laughs> yeah, in, the, the little helper, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Good stuff. Randy, it's always great to talk to you, my friend. Thank you so much, and uh, you take care. And, uh, again, tell Jen we said hi, and I hope to run into you soon. See you guys. Take care. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Love talking what to What a guy. You know, I know. when I called him, uh, I saw, I'd seen the pictures on uh, Facebook of, of the boy. And I said, Randy is... I know that's not your son. Is that your grandson? I just never think of him being that old to have grandchildren, but he's got... Just like me. You never think no, of you, me. I, oh, yeah, we yeah. think he was old. Yeah. <laughs> you. We all do. In fact, there's a lot of listeners out there that comment on that. Yeah? yeah About how young I am? Oh, yeah. yeah. That, yeah that too. Yeah, yeah. You, you yeah. keep believing that. I'm, I'm thinking, like we talked about at dinner last night, we need some of that... Uh, Paul Popeil spray on hair. That's jet. <laughs> oh, black. we'll go right to the hair stuff, huh? Yeah, okay, yeah. Right, I got you. Yeah, yeah, he's and, trying to uh, deflect. He's and, deflecting. And, 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 and then we're going to take some tape. We're going to tape it off so at least he'll have some forehead left. Oh, now he's getting personal. <laughs> <laughs> Just the thought of that. What color? Jet black. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Jet black. We'll have Randy Shoe mix up a. We'll have Shoe Randy mix up a black. <laughs> Correct. Just Randy mix me up a color of black for my hair. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> yeah. Some uh, paint house black. There you go. All right. Uh, the In Wheel Time Car Talk show is available twenty four seven through the iHeartRadio app. Look for In Wheel Time Car Talk. And a new daily podcast is available from your favorite podcast provider. We also video stream our three-hour weekly show on Facebook, YouTube, and InWheelTime.com. The In Wheel Time Car Talk Show continues right after this quick break. 
Pro-Am Auto Accessories has been serving Houston's auto enthusiasts since 1984, providing world-class products for sports cars, European sedans, and American muscle. Pro-Am is known as the place to go to find exclusive and hard-to-find parts and accessories. Pro-Am is one of the very first distributors in the USA for brands such as Recaro, Redline, Momo, Corbo, and Simpson. Located in the heart of Houston's premier retail and service corridor, the Galleria area, Pro-Am's walk-in storefront includes an 8,000-square-foot warehouse, showroom, and installation. Base. Pro-Am not only sells parts and accessories, but also offers installation and service. Pro-Am is now reaching a worldwide audience through Pro-Am.com, taking its local reputation to the rest of the world. At Pro-Am Auto, you'll be dealing with a small group of professionals who truly want to help you with your automotive needs. If you don't see what you're looking for on the website, call and Pro-Am will lend you a hand. Pro-Am Auto, 6125 Richmond at Green Ridge in Houston's Galleria area. Call them at 713-781-7755. Want to feel good about something special you did for someone special? In Wheel Time and the original Loopy Tortilla group of Tex-Mex restaurants have joined together to help a very worthy cause, God's Garage, a Christian-based 501c3 charity. We know there are lots of places and organizations out there where you can donate a car, truck, or SUV, but we're asking you, our car enthusiast family, to consider donating to God's Garage. Visit GodsGarage.org and learn about its mission, the women that have been helped, how each one is screened, and about their Restore You program. A car donation is an easy way to make a difference in the lives of others. God's Garage needs good operating vehicles, but will take all types in working and non-working condition. Make your heart and soul feel good by donating your gently used vehicle and help support single mothers, widows, and wives of deployed military at godsgarage.org. And now for something completely different. And Jeff, is going to do, <laughs> Jeff is going to do a commercial oh, because yeah. we didn't get one for Keels and Wheels. Yeah, Keels and Wheels is coming up May 4th and 5th. It's the 28th annual Keels and Wheels Concours. Concours d'Elegance. It is at the Lakewood Yacht Club in Seabrook, Texas, coming up very, very soon and just not too much longer. Tickets are $30 in advance through the website, which is www.keels-wheels.com. And then you got $40 at the gate. Students, $15, and children under 12 are free. And you park off-site, and mm-hmm. they bus you there. Yeah, and they there's will. no charge yep. for that. Houston Methodist Clear Lake uh, Outpatient Building in Nassau Bay. Uh, and then they got some parking. They're parking at uh, Bay Elementary School in Seabrook, uh, just off of 146 in Seabrook. May 4th opens at 10 a.m. to 5 through Sunday, May 5th, opens at 9 to 4. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I've got to do this. Yeah. No, you're, you're going to have. Jeff's got a very special feature oh, that I've, actually, when he told me he was going to do this, I thought, oh, I, somewhere, and I have it. I don't have it with me right mm-hmm. now, but I have the model car that I built. Back in the 60s, that because I was going to Meyer Speedway and seeing all the 55 Chevys run around there in yeah, the yeah. sportsman class, I wrecked it. Oh. And so what I did was I heated up the front end and I smashed it in so it looked like it had hit the <laughs> hit the hit the fence head on, you know. So uh, then well, I got a story of that where years ago I had a uh, a little red wagon, a model of a little red wagon. Yep. And uh, we saw one in the I car, think, the little the, red the, wagon. Car, the little red wagon, yep. which was a Dodge. And uh, I think we saw it at like one of the events we were at. And uh, I told Jason, I said, you know, I like that car. I had one when I was a kid. I explained it to him. And lo and behold, I think it was a birthday or later on, he got me the little red wagon model. He goes, Dad, I'll build it for you. Oh, he Perfect. built it. He, well, to this day, that car is on a shelf in his garage still in the box. <laughs> he hasn't built it yet. <laughs> it's like all the so projects. It, all the projects. You know well, he's got we, that 50 so hot you, rod in you there, can't, too. When you can't move anymore right. and you need something to do, right. take it down and build yeah, it. Yeah, we'll have to get a hold of him. He's got to take the dust off it. But anyways... Uh, <laughs> just looking at it, and it's pretty good. So the, the story of injection mold plastic, which is polystyrene of scale models, begins in the early 50s when the two businessmen, uh, Louis Glaser in America, founder of Ravel, we all know that, yep. and then Nicholas Cove out of the England side of it, founder of Airfix. Independently, they decided to work with injection molding and put together suitable plastic pieces for glue. So uh, they worked on it, and they came up with it. So it was pretty good. Model cars can be traced back to the early 1900s when the first original cars, the original cars, hit the road. Um, It was after World War I and the European model makers 
produced tin plate cars, and this was only for rich kids back then, back uh, in the yeah, 1900s. Yes. Tin cars. Tin yes. cars. So as time passed, cars became increasingly popular among the hobbyists, and they started collecting them and customizing them. Uh, it was a hobby that required both patience and creativity and an opportunity for individuals to express their passions for automobiles. Golly, That's, I remember that. Do you remember that? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Well, it's an excellent educational tool for children. You know, hand-eye coordination, different types of models, and they get to you know look at the automobiles. See, I didn't think of it that mm -hmm. way, but yeah, yeah, I get it. Uh -huh. And then they're studying the replicas of is you know the dad's got a, a Pontiac and I've got a model of a Pontiac, whatever the case. So the hobby helped cultivate curiosity while encouraging some to seek out more information. Like you melted the front end and pushed it in to make up custom crash. Right. So. <laughs> Uh, some may argue that the model car collecting is nothing more than a pastime, just no significant value. You're just wasting your days away. Uh, but it fosters positive values. Hobbies like model car collecting encourage people to be more motivated, like you, Mike. Patient and detail-oriented <laughs> qualities that can help in their personal yeah, and professional Mike. lives. However, collectors still argue uh, whether hand-built models or factory assemblies uh, are worth the time spending it more, you know, on that project or you know doing other things. So materials are part of the skilled artisans, as they call it, investing carefully. Artisans, artisans, artisans. Sure, artisan is a well. I think. I think. Well, we're going to dip into that well and uh, <laughs> give and a, attention and, to detail. Okay. Yeah. There you go. So the evolution came full scale. Uh, there are people that still do it. There are enthusiasts. Can you still out there. buy them? You can. And here's the kicker: you can go to like a Hobby Lobby and find them, you're not going to find a scale model car that you see that we build today, like that one there, for under 30 bucks. Some are Whoa. 40 They're online, some of the classics, for $200. Whoa. You're you can, kidding you, Like me. that right there, you can buy, if it's a classic and there's very hard to get a hold of, they don't make anymore, people collect them and you can buy one for around you know, 150 to 200 They collect them unassembled. Unass they collect them in a box. Yeah. Oh my gosh. You know, I... Is Ravel still in business? Uh, Ravel's still in business. AMT's still in business. There's a couple others out there. Some, I don't want to say off-brands, but things I've never heard of. But you can still Chinese buy Chinese or something. Well, it could be. Uh, but you can go to your local hobby store or toy store and, or go to an event like uh, we've been. You know, at the at the like Autorama, where they uh, have Autorama, a big specifically yeah. Autorama, or the Corvette we did down yes. in, in Galveston. Yes, in fact, there was a guy that had nothing but models, yeah. and he was yeah. selling them, and he had the them box. in groups. Like you know, he had all the Chevys in a group, he had all the Fords yeah, in a group. Yeah, so yeah, I remember yeah. that now. I yeah, didn't yeah. stop and look. You got at time it. to do that, don't you, Mars? Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah He's yeah. got patience. He does. He doesn't have time for that. I've seen him. I've seen a dog named Patience once. Did you? Patience. That was the dog's name. Yeah, that was the lady's name too on uh, support your local sheriff, I think, or something. Okay, well, I don't know about that. James Only, Garner. Okay, well, there you go. Yeah. Today's Animal right. Time Car Talk Show is sponsored by the group of original Loopy Tortilla restaurants in Houston, Beaumont, and College Station, mm -hmm. Gulf Coast Auto Shield. We've got a car show coming up as car social, as we say, and I finally got the. The spot loaded in here, That's so you'll hear about that coming up. Mm -hmm. And Pro Am Auto Accessories. We continue the In Wheel Time Car Talk Show right after this quick break. The original group of Loopy Tortilla Restaurants will have you telling your family and friends just what the original recipes mean when it comes to the best fajitas in Southeast Texas. Founder Stan Holt invites you to visit the original Loopy Tortilla near I-10 and Highway 6. Here's the original house that inspired the design of all the rest and the original charm that helped make Loopy Tortilla the go-to destination for Houston Tex-Mex. Speaking of original, nothing can compete with the original lime pepper marinade that everyone will agree makes Loopy Tortilla award-winning beef fajitas the best anywhere. Loopy Tortilla Katie is another location that gives you the same quality and service Houstonians have come to expect at Loopy's. It's located just off I-10 of the Grand Parkway at Kingsland Boulevard in Katie. Find yourself in Aggie Land? Head to the Loopy Tortilla in College Station, located just around the corner from Kyle Field. It's a great place to enjoy those famous frozen margaritas before or after the game. Headed east to Louisiana? Stop in at the Loopy Tortilla in Beaumont. It twos on I-10. You can't miss it. The original group of Loopy Tortilla restaurants invites you in for the best Tex-Mex anywhere. Gulf Coast Auto Shield is having another car social Saturday morning, May 18th from 8 to 11. It's a car cruise in like no other. Expect Ferraris, Lamborghinis, Corvettes, and the featured brand Porsche. Get social at this special cruise in event. You'll also see Gulf Coast Auto Shield's private workshop and learn about their many products and services. Questions are welcomed. 
Gulf Coast Auto Shield is easy to get to at 11275 South Sam Houston Tollway near West Airport Boulevard, just south of the Southwest Freeway. The Car Social featuring Porsche takes place Saturday morning, May 18th from 8 to 11. Tell your friends, and no matter what car you have, bring it and enjoy this rare opportunity to see some of Houston's finest rides. In Wheel Time will bring its car talk show there too, so join us for another Car Social at Gulf Coast Auto Shield, Saturday morning, May 18th, 8 to 11 at 11275 South Sam Houston Tollway, just south of the Southwest Freeway. Visit GCAutoShield.com to see the show flyer for more details. That's it for this podcast episode of the In Wheel Time Car Show. I'm Don Armstrong, inviting you to join us for our live show every Saturday morning, 8 to 11 a.m. Central on Facebook, YouTube, Twitch, and our InWheelTime.com website. Podcasts are available on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, iHeart Podcast, Podcast Addict, TuneIn, Pandora, and Amazon Music. Keep listening, and we'll see you soon.